So this is chapter eight, section one, right triangle trigonometry applications. I like the applications part because that means it's like real world, real stuff. Real folks. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve right triangles. When you're asked to solve, please write this down on your paper. When you're asked to solve right triangles, you not only have to find the missing angles, because we know one is 90, you need to find the other two, but you need to make sure you have the measures of all the sides as well. So solving a triangle means I have all the sides and all the angles. Remembering our Pythagorean theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and the fact that A and B are complementary. So A plus B is 90 degrees. Down here at the bottom. Okay, so if you have a triangle that you know a side is, one of your sides is 2, one of your angles is 40. If you're asked to solve the triangle, you have to find the missing angle and the other two sides. So we find the missing angle by using that complementary formula. Um, 40 plus B equals 90. If I subtract 40 from both sides, I get B equals 50. We have, if we use, and my suggestion is always use the information you have. So I have angle 40, side of 2. If I want to find A, so that is opposite over adjacent, that's tangent. Tangent of 40 degrees is A over 2. Cosine of 40 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 over C. Then in this case we multiply both sides by 2 and we get 1.68 approximately. In this case um, we multiply both sides by C and then divide by cosine of 40 to get 2 over cosine of 40 which is approximately equal to 2.61. And now we have all of our angles and all of our sides. This triangle is solved. All right. <clears throat> Second scenario. We don't have any angles. We just have sides. So if we just have sides, what's the easiest thing to solve for? Yeah, the, the third side. So let's go ahead and Pythagorean theorem that. So... 2 squared plus 3 squared, square rooted, will give us C. So C ends up being about 3.61. So do I use cosine and sine to solve for A and B? Cosine is, so if I'm on B, so let's do A first. If I'm on A, um, opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Should I use sine to solve for A? Okay, so we are going to be using tan to solve for A because this value right here, this hypotenuse of our right triangle, is a rounded value. It's approximate. Um, so we want to make sure we use, if it's available to us, that we use numbers that are not rounded, not approximated. Um, sometimes we're going to be back into a corner and we have to, but it's preferable to use our exact values. So tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, 3 over 2. We are going to inverse tan. We are, we're transitioning. Last chapter we were in radians. This chapter is, this section is in degrees. Make sure you change your calculator back to degrees if you're, calculating degrees. Otherwise, it'll give you out um, radians, and that's not going to be anywhere near as close. 
And so just do a double check on your calculator. Make sure you put, when you put in inverse tan of three halves, you get out 56.3. Sure, our settings are correct. All right, so if this is 56.3, this is 90, then B has to be 56.3 plus B equals 90. You subtract 56.3 from both sides, and you get 33.7. Can I use inverse tan of B equals 2 over 3 equals opposite over adjacent? Absolutely, and will I get out 33.7? Absolutely. Is it easier to use the triangle sum theorem? So much easier. So <clears throat> in this case, this is when, um, when you are just left with one angle, it's okay to go ahead and use your rounded number. Because, go ahead. All right, and then now we have all of our angles and all of our sides, so this triangle is solved. All right, here it comes. Here it comes, guys. Four problems. Woohoo! Okay, a straight tra trail leads from the Alpine Hotel. Woohoo! That sounds fun. Um, elevation 8,000 feet to a scenic overlook, elevation 11,100 feet. The length of the trail is 14,100 feet. What is the incline? What's the inclination? inclination grade of the trail what is that is what is the angle b in figure four so we know thankfully they drew this picture for us thank you example problem creators um what are we going to do first to solve this triangle So yeah, we get 3,100 feet because this point here is 8,000 feet. This point here is 11,100 feet. We subtract the two so that we know that the side length is 3,100. So we have the side opposite our angle. We have the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So we're gonna go ahead and inverse sine Three, I'm gonna, I would go 31 over 141. I wouldn't even bother putting in the zero, so I'd just round that down. So when we do that, we get 12.7 degrees. The hardest part of word problems like these are drawing the pictures. Trigonometry is something that we've been tackling since Algebra 1, so that part's okay. It's making sure your picture makes sense. So the inclination or the grade of the trail is approximately 12.7 degrees. In operation since 1846, the Gibbs Hill Lighthouse stands 117 feet high on a hill 240 feet high. So its a beam of light is 362 feet above sea level. So if you see Here's our earth. Here it is, 362 feet above the earth. Here's the center of the earth. We know that the radius of the earth is 3,960 miles. So that applies here to this radius as well. A brochure states that the light can be seen on the horizon about 26 miles distant. Verify the accuracy of this statement. So they're saying this distance is 26 feet. We are going to make that distance A, and we're going to go ahead and solve for it. So if we find a cosine theta, so the cosine of this theta is the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and they get three oh i see what they did so this is in feet and this is in miles so this isn't 362 miles this is 362 feet so they had to convert it from miles to so from feet to miles so you divide by 5280 so this is 
3,960 miles and then 3,960 miles plus this little fraction of a mile. So it's inverse cosine of that. And we get our angle is point three three seven one five degrees which is equal to about twenty point two three minutes uh, so the brochure did not indicate whether the distance is measured in nautical miles or statute miles so let's calculate both distances. The distance in nautical miles is a measure of the angle theta in minutes. So somewhere you guys may need to highlight that. Um, the distance in nautical miles is a measure of our angle in minutes. So S is approximately equal to 20.23 nautical miles. We have to find so now we have to find um, the land distance, and they're going to actually uh, use the arc formula, so for the distance of the arc, because we're not truly on right triangle, we're kind of on that curve, the radius of the earth. So the distance S in statute miles is given by the formula S equals R theta where theta is measured in radians. So we take our degrees, we convert it to radians. Do you guys remember the radian conversion? Multiply it by, pi it over 180. And then we're gonna multiply that by the radius of the Earth. So 3,960 times our radians is 23.3 miles. So in either case, whether we're talking nautical miles or statute miles, um, the brochure definitely is overstating its ability to see 26 miles. All right, navigation and surveying, woohoo! So the direction or bearing from point O to point P is the acute angle between the ray OP and the vertical line that is the north-south line. So if you're talking what is the bearing or the direction from O to P, you would say it's 30 degrees. What is the bearing from O to P2? So what is the angle between the north-south line and P? That's 50 degrees. The bearing between 0 and P3 is the, dis the angle between the north-south line and P3, which is 70. And check this out. Uh, and then P4 is 20 degrees. So P1 is north 30 degrees east. It's in the northeast quadrant, and it's 30 degrees from the north-south line. P2 is in the southwest quadrant, and it's 50 degrees from the north-south line. P3 is in the northwest quadrant, and it's 70 degrees from the north-south line. Okay, so your turn. Put P4's direction or bearing on your paper. So when we're looking at the bearing of P4, he is south 20 degrees east. The vertical direction goes first, the horizontal direction goes second, and then the angle from the north-south line goes in between. Okay, a Boeing, Boeing 777 aircraft takes off from O'Hare Airport on a runway to left which has a bearing of north 20 degrees east. After flying for one mile, the pilot of the aircraft requests permission to turn 90 degrees 
and head toward the northwest. The request is granted. After the plane goes two miles in this direction, what bearing should the control tower use to locate the aircraft? This is exciting. Okay, so the picture of it looks like this. Runway two left has a bearing of 20 or north 20 degrees east. So north is in this positive kind of our y direction and east is in the positive x direction. So this guy is 20 degrees. Oop. So and now he goes two miles in that direction. Our new bearing is going to be this theta. So if we look at the information we have, after flying one mile, this guy turns and flies two miles in this direction. So that is, and they, they turn 90 degrees. That's just given the information. So this angle is tangent, and which one is right next to my theta? One. So this is adjacent and this is opposite, so it's 2 over 1. So tangent of theta equals 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. Inverse tangent of 2 is equal to 63.4 degrees. Is that our bearing? So what, do we tell, uh, do we post it, oh it's uh, north 63.4 west. Is that our bearing? So this angle theta from OP is 63.4. The bearing is not 63.4 degrees because that includes the 20 degrees here. Our angle for our bearing that we use is from the north-south line to our plane. So we have to subtract out the 20 degrees. So the bearing from O to Q is north 43.4 degrees west. And yay, that's it.